Uh, Mitch, who's been waiting on hold for quite a long time from my original hometown of Kansas City. How you doing, Mitch? Good. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, nice to talk with you guys. Uh, hi, Jen. Hi, Matt. Hi. Hi. Thanks for waiting. What do you got for us? Well, um, I grew up uh, in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Mm. Um, been a member, of course, forever. Um, I... Uh, quote unquote struggled as a teen. Uh, then I had an experience where um, I decided uh, it was true and I needed to serve a mission. Uh, so I did. I served, you know, full time mission and uh, then uh, came home, got married in the temple. And uh, there were some experiences that just kind of that I had, you know, after returning that I guess kind of pulled some doubt strings which of course you guys know in most churches it's that's kind of a taboo you don't touch on those topics and some of those things kind of started to unravel but uh the one thing that just really holds on to me is you know the the you know praying to find truth and also um you know the holy ghost is a guide and and it's there it's it's there to teach us all truth and it, it enlightens us and it brings us to, uh, you know, whatever God's truth is, um, it leads us down that path. And so I've they, always felt these, these are the things that, that are keeping, yeah. keeping you in belief. Well, yes, yes. So right. how do you, because how do you test that? Gonna... How do you test that to make sure that when you pray, you are actually being given truth from some external source? Well, that's one thing that I've been trying to figure out. Uh, the only way that I know to test it is to do it. Yeah, but Mitch, don't you think you ought to figure out how to test it before you accept that it's the case? Yeah, and that's, that's I mean, because, okay, grow, growing up in the church, mm -hmm. the, the way that you test it is, you know, search, ponder, and pray, and that's really important. Right. Um, so the searching of, you know, the scriptures and, you know, re you got to read the scriptures, then you ask God, that's the way that you experiment with it. That's the way that you find out if it's true. And if the Holy Ghost will tell you that it's true, then you have a witness to yourself, to your soul. How do you know that, that the Holy Ghost is true? How do you know if the Holy Ghost tells you that it's true? Well, that has always been one thing that has been very hard since I've become a lot more skeptical for me to actually nail down. And, you know, it, it, every time I go to church, I, I mean, I remember, okay, it's always a peaceful feeling, right? I mean, that's one thing that they describe it as. Um, and I know that feeling because I've had it before. I go to church. I would go to church sometimes, and I would have that Me too. peaceful feeling. And it was like a, a yes, like a, a peaceful feeling, uh, a feeling of comfort, and a feeling of assurance. Um, so so that, that's where, yeah. Let, let me ask you this because this might help. It might just make a mess. So you and I have both had that experience. Uh huh. And you're a Mormon. And I'm a Southern Baptist, or I was a Southern Baptist when I would have that feeling in church. Right. And, and each of us would look at the other's religion and say that it's wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay, yes. Okay, keep going. I don't want to interrupt you in the middle of your thought, so. No, I mean, you might not have been as keen that Southern Baptist doctrine is wrong as I was keen that Mormonism was wrong and invented by a fraud. I would, I would... I would, I would agree with that because I mean, you know, I mean, my whole life I'm taught that every church has truth to it. It's just yeah. we're the complete, we're the full truth. We're we're the one church, and I'm not as strong as I was on that claim by itself. You know, the one true and only church, and well, yeah, everybody finds out. Yes, I mean, and I've struggled with that too. So the idea that every this and yeah I'm sorry the, the idea that every church has truth to it is kind of irrelevant. It's kind of like saying you can find something truthful in every book that's on the shelves in our library here. Doesn't tell you whether or not okay. the foundational beliefs are true or whether the entire belief 
There's no way for me to tell which religion has, if any religion has a complete truth. The fact that you can find something true is, is pretty trivial. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have multiple people in different religions who all think that they're getting messages from the Holy Spirit or a God, and, and they have nothing more than just vague feelings. I felt a sense of peace. I felt a sense of euphoria. I felt ecstatic, or I, I felt that I was being led. Um, why? First of all, I don't think that, that makes sense, because if there's a God who wants to lead you to truth, it should be something uh, obvious and demonstrable, not just, oh, I had a feeling. But if people in different mm -hmm. religions, including religions that have contradictory teachings, are all getting these feelings, isn't it more likely that these are just feelings that people get when they do things like religion that have nothing to do with a supernatural realm or guidance from somewhere else? I can see where you're, what you're saying with that, and it does make a lot of sense. But the argument to that on the theist side is, well, if since the Holy Ghost is the bearer of truth, and all religions do have some part of that truth, and yeah, you have the trivial things which we disagree upon, wouldn't the Holy Ghost be then bearing witness of the truth that is so true why between would, the religions? Why wouldn't the I mean, Holy does, Ghost does that make sense? Why wouldn't the Holy Ghost go to the Southern Baptists and tell them they're doing it wrong and they need to be Mormons? If well, that, then that goes it, into the free will argument. You know what no, I mean? No, no, no. no, no, no. You that, just said it's there to reveal the truth. And if the truth is that the LDS Church is the one that got it right, then every time the Holy Spirit right. convinces a Southern Baptist that they've got it right. Then, that, then in that spirit, lying to them? Well, it would be more of maybe okay. And the the, I agree with you on that. And and it's still right. So if the Holy Ghost though is telling them, maybe they could. And this would be the excuse that would be used is, well, the Holy Ghost is telling them a certain portion of the truth, and then they're confusing it with the whole thing. What would you call what? somebody who is selectively parceling out bits and pieces of the truth to different people who are all convinced then that they have the truth? What would I call them? I mean, is that an honest? Like, I mean, is that an honest individual? Referring... If if I tell if I, there's twenty people or so out in the other room. And if I give right. each one of them a little piece of truth, and, con and they are then convinced that they have the whole truth, and I don't actually correct that misperception, what kind of per am, am I an honest person? Okay, the setup is pretty simple, and I see what you're saying about that, yes. Um, and in that certain regard to the, the scenario that you're giving me, yeah, I think that you're you would be kind of a dick i mean you would so you why, know, why if, would if that not, not apply everybody to, why would that not apply to this apply. holy ghost thing you've got well okay i suppose uh it it does it does in a way so now it gets uh, to because, actually the second the second issue which is all those people over there on the other side of the glass they all have as close to absolute confirmation as you could ever get that Matt, the entity in question, actually gave them this information. They're not relying on a loose feeling. So now you've got a case where one of the potential solutions is that there's a lot of people in other religions who think they're getting messages from the Holy Spirit, but they're not, because that's the only way you rehabilitate your, the, the idea of the Holy Ghost. If it's a truth teller, and it guides you to truth, is to say that these right. other people aren't actually being guided by the Holy Ghost, even though they think they are. I mean, that's about the only way to rehabilitate that, right? Well, say that one more time. <laughs> so, so the Holy Ghost uh, is the guide to truth. And the Holy Ghost, you are, con yeah. you are convinced that the Holy Ghost has guided you to the truth of the, uh, uh, of the LDS Church. Oh, I, I did, but now it's like kind of in okay. question. Okay, but it, kind of, at yeah. some point you did. But there are other people in Baptist churches and others who are convinced that the Holy Ghost right. guided them to the truth of their religion. And so that, that, arrange, right, that's, right. that sets yeah. up the conflict we just finished talking about. One way to rehabilitate that conflict right. is to say that you are actually getting the truth from the Holy Ghost, but they are not mm -hmm. actually, they think that the Holy Ghost is leading them to truth, but they're not actually getting anything from the Holy Ghost at all, right? 
That's a possibility. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that, and then that that's what I was trying to kind of say, that, yeah, they're, the, the argument of that is, well, they have some truth. They're getting the revelation of some But we already determined that, that if that's the case, then the Holy Ghost is a dick. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, so, so let, I suppose let me, you can say it that way, yeah. Let me give you something else to think about. And, I, and I'm trying to find yeah. this article on here, and I can't pull it up right now, but I'll, I'll find it. There have been a lot of studies done on people um, who were thinking about what their concept of God thinks about an issue. Okay, and One mm-hmm. of the studies they did, um, and I think this was published in, um, I can't remember now exactly where it was published, but this was a, a peer-reviewed study that was published. The researchers set this up so that people were asked questions about what other people thought about certain high-profile issues, things like abortion, capital punishment, um, marriage equality, that sort of thing, things that were likely Mm -hmm. to um, provoke strong opinions about that. So they were asked about what, say, uh, different celebrities or politicians thought about these issues. They were asked what they personally thought about those issues. And then they were asked what their God thought about those issues. And they were put in an fMRI machine, a functional MRI machine, for these Mm -hmm. studies so that the researchers Mm -hmm. could look at what part of the brain lights up when they think about, you know, what these different uh, scenarios entail. And so when they thought about what someone else, a celebrity or a politician, thought about these issues, it would light up a certain part of the brain. And then when they thought about what they personally thought about those issues, a different part of the brain would light up. When they were asked what their God thought about those issues, guess which part of the brain lit up? I don't know all the parts of the brain, but which part? It was the part of the brain that corresponds to self. So that's why your God always Mm -hmm. hates all the same people you do. So when you're praying and you're thinking about, you know, what God wants... And you think that's the Holy Spirit guiding you? It's just you. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and and that's more and more of the conclusion that I'm trying to, I guess, elucidate in a way. Um, because when you when you grow up in and invest so much and have an entire family with um, with which things start to become at odds with what you're discovering and and what you're finding to actually be real. It's difficult, especially when um, it's a scenario in which, you know, you have um, uh, a family which, uh, you know, mom and dad don't see eye to eye on on real important issues. And when you have a religion Um, that is going to make your family have to cut ties with you if you leave. Yeah. I've never felt that. Well, and that's you know, you're 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 kind of right, and it's not necessarily like a doctrinal thing, at least right. not from anything that I have found. It's definitely much more social, and that is a very very terrifying, horrible uh, uh, thought. Uh, you know, I mean, it's it's my entire world which would be completely ripped from me, and and. I've had, you know, a lot of these discussions with, you know, other people and, you know, um, and many times it's, it's kind of hard to talk about, you know, the, the bedrock of the issue, you know, what, what is your foundation truly built on, you know, and, and, um, I can remember experiences that I had, um, I mean, on my mission, I specifically remember, I mean, it was near a vision of uh, Christ and Joseph Smith. I, I mean, it was almost visual. And if you would have asked me, uh, it, it was in the middle of one of our meetings. Um, I mean, I was just in, I was a ball of snot and tears. And I, you would have asked me at that moment, you know, deny your religion or die. Without question, die. I will die yeah. because this is true. Well, it yeah, is and the, absolutely true. And the thing to remember is that um, your indoctrination is designed to produce that experience. 
Mm -hmm. For me, the the, the yeah. primary question is whether or not it's true, and you are right. That's you, what I'd like. I uh, mean, okay, I, but, I share that too. I want to know the, it's true. But the time to believe it is after there's sufficient reason to think that it's true, and not one second before. And so, when we right. talk about these things, if if we don't have a mechanism by which we can determine with reliability whether or not it's true, then belief can't possibly be warranted. And instead, and this is, this is the difficult part, it would seem to be the case that I was convinced that my former religion was true on really bad grounds, uh, an awful foundation. Mm -hmm. And what was that foundation? That foundation was the people around me shared those beliefs, taught me those beliefs, um, how do I know what the Holy Spirit is? I only know because other people have described it, which is why you get into the fuzzy descriptions of, you know, I had a feeling of peace or euphoria, or while we were singing and praising, I, I felt elated, I got goosebumps. Um, look, as soon as people tell you this is what the Holy Spirit is like, then that just becomes a part of it. Well, of course these people are telling me the truth, and they know more about this than I do, and they've had these experiences before as well. And so you get this this self-reinforcing uh, script right. and delusions. And right. so, right. if it were actually true, first of all, it should be fairly easy to demonstrate because there's no shortage of believers. Second of all, does it make sense for there to be a God who wants some sort of interaction who doesn't provide sufficient evidence that he's actually there? And the 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 explanation that you've been trained to give is one about free will. That, you know, God can't reveal too much or it violates our free will. Now, I don't, I think the, the Mormon view on Satan is that he's Jesus' brother. Yeah, like he, yeah, and in the pre-existence there was a plan that God made, so then that way, you know, the, then the universe was created. Uh, and, but he's, but um, he's, is he evil? Yeah. He's, he's evil within context of... Yeah, he was cast out because sure. he went and wanted to go against everything that God, so here's God's the thing. plan was. Does Lucifer, it, assuming it's all true, doesn't Lucifer know with seemingly absolute certainty that God exists and is real and has a plan and is powerful? Right, and he, he knows the plan and he wants to destroy the plan. That's the doctrine. Yeah, so if God can reveal himself fully to Lucifer to, to satisfy Lucifer, and it's not like Lucifer's running around questioning whether or not God exists, and yet he still maintains the free will to oppose that, right? Yes, and this has been a huge dilemma for me. This, it should you know, be. This exact scenario that you're talking about has it, been a huge thing. because It blows the free, free the will world, excuse out of the water, because that means that God could show up and reveal himself to me personally right now, and I would, I would yeah. no longer be an atheist. I would be completely convinced that, that a God exists, and I would still have the free will to reject him. Right, exactly. And the, the other dilemma that I've always had is, okay, you have this battle in heaven, uh, and they describe it as a war, right? Mm -hmm. And a third of the hosts were taken, and they were led by by Satan, and they are all now his his angels and do his bidding. Um, if Satan absolutely knows, he still maintains his freedom. Was kicked out of heaven. First of all, why the heck would you want to leave heaven when you know it would get you kicked out, unless you had the idea that there was a possibility you could win? Yeah, but still. Even under that, you know, sorry, fantasy model, Lucifer and a third all exercise their free will to reject God, despite being, right. you know, despite clearly having sufficient evidence that God's real. So, if I say, why can't God give me sufficient evidence that he's real, then free will is no longer a plausible explanation, right? Yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah. So now the question is, why doesn't God reveal himself to everybody? Because we all need to take it on faith. Okay. Is, is faith a pathway to truth and understanding? Well, I mean, that's definitely become something that um, I've become less and less privy to. That's for sure. Um, I don't think that it is because How just could like it could be? when you were talking about it. How could it what? be? Isn't is there any position you couldn't just take on faith? 
Right. No, you're you're right, and that's why it's always been less and less. And I don't accept it as a, a good way to you know receive truth, which is you know constantly waned and waned, and you know. So if you were God, yeah, would you expect anybody just to take it on faith? Well, no. It's like with my kids. You know, would would I just be an absent father and maybe send them? you know, little secret messages when they grow up to, you know, teach them about me and, and what I do. I think that's kind of ridiculous, you know? Yeah, and I, I think it's worse kids, than that. And because I teach my kids. I think it's worse than that because your kids have met you. So what if you had grown up without a mother and a father? You'd grown up in an orphanage, never knew right. any, any of your relatives, and yet every now and then you'd find a message that claimed it was from your parents and they were telling you what to do, and if you didn't do it, they were going to take you in the basement and torture you. Yeah, no, I mean, that's... Well, I guess to be fair, Mormons, we don't believe that it's necessarily like there's few people that go to the quote-unquote hell. Sure. So it makes it a little easier. But no, I understand the, the, the premise of your Well, you could also, you could also go down the path that, you know, uh, in Mormonism, eventually, uh, if it were all true, you're going to end up a god of your own realm, and then you can make up whatever rules you want. Yeah. 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 So, um, so basically, there's, there's a... th that, doesn't that mean that you got stuck in the realm where the god is a dick who's hiding, and, <laughs> and only by obeying the dick god who's hiding... Can you then become a good and benevolent God who's honest and open with your creation at, you know, some other universe? Um, I suppose. I, I mean, it, it, it does, it, yeah, it opens up a can of worms, which is why a lot of, you know, my, my, my faith has waned quite a bit because of, uh, because of all those thoughts, you know, I've thought about a lot of those things, and it's just hard to walk away from that with a lifetime I get of it. investment. I get it. And and we, and, we are going to, I am going to move on to some other callers, but I want to leave you with a few thoughts, and you are always welcome to call back, or you can email tv at atheist-community.org. But number one, you got to make a decision about whether you care more about whether something's true than whether it's comforting. And then you, you don't get to choose what you believe. You're either convinced of it or you're not. But you do get to choose, to some extent, how you act. And there are plenty of people who no longer believe, in, not only in the LDS Church, but in the Baptist churches and everything else. They don't believe, but to keep going for the sake of maintaining their relationships with their family and their friends, and out of fear of what will happen, what the cost is going to be if they were to give it all up. Um, you, you have to make the decision about what you're comfortable putting up with in order to keep the peace. And is it more important to be true to yourself and true to the truth uh, of what you, what you are or aren't convinced of? And it's not easy. But you are by far not alone uh, in these struggles. And once people do find their way out of different religions... Uh, there are a lot of organizations, the Recovering from Religion organization, there are, there's a secular therapy project to help you know, people deal with those sorts of things. There's groups like the ACA where you can just come and visit with like-minded people. Um, and it doesn't mean, you know, like you could come down and hang out with us tonight and have all kinds of conversations about your doubts and concerns. Um, doesn't mean you're an atheist, which is why we're right. welcome with atheist-friendly people as well. Um, I don't want to diminish in any way the difficulty that you're going through because right. I know from my own personal experience, from my wife's transition out, uh, from the thousands of people who've emailed after they've left religion, how difficult their life was. But I also would be remiss if I didn't point out how many people utterly find, uh, find life far more fulfilling and rewarding by not being trapped into trying to find a way to justify things they no longer believe. And mm -hmm. how sometimes, in some cases, all it's taken is one person who people know and like and think are reasonable to find their way out and to honestly have those conversations with other people. You might find that there are many more people in your family who are have the same doubts that you do, have thought the same things that you have who have their own concerns 
And at the end of the day, you can't believe something unless you have a good, unless you are convinced of it. What's the worst thing that could happen if you decided, hey, I, 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 well, not even, it's not even a decision. If you just recognized, I don't believe what the LDS Church is teaching anymore, um, and you die, what? and you die right then, not convinced. Have you given it a full, honest effort to try to find out what the truth is? And if you have, how, how can it possibly be your fault? Right. I, the... Yeah, the biggest that that I'm not afraid of. Uh, the it's just the fear of the family, and like you said, you know the the sacrificing of the social life and sacrificing of, um, you know, and it wouldn't be of course of of my volition. It would just be because you know uh, doctrine states, you know, yep, m- right. where I, I my family's eternal. I think the fact and that if I don't believe it's eternal, it's like an eternal divorce. You know what I mean? Yep. And and. Yeah. That's an uncomfortable feeling for people on the other side. You don't believe that we're going to be together anymore? I don't know if I want to be with somebody like that. You know, it's, 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 it's a hard thing to, to think about. But you so, get to um, be together now. Yeah. What? So, uh, oh, so, yeah. 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 So, Which oh. I love. And it's, I'd do almost anything for it, you know? I think the fact that you're far more concerned about the family relationships not only um, should be brought up if, if ever those discussions has, but it tells you a lot about what you are and aren't convinced of right now. Uh, you know, you, you, you're far more concerned about the relationship you have. If somebody says, if you don't believe we're going to be together forever, then I want to end the relationship right now rather than continuing on until we die. I mean, that, what does that tell you about how, what their mind state is? We, I, I would not end a relationship with somebody now merely because they thought we weren't going to be together after we're dead. Yeah. That's true. But it still hurts. I know. And we've heard from a lot of people who, who are, yeah, in fact, completely ostracized from their family. Uh, and there's no easy answer. Um, for some people, yeah. the pain probably never goes away. Uh, yeah. So, uh, question then, do you, do you know off the top of your head then uh, any secular type of organization like the ACA up here in KC? Yeah, Kansas City Oasis is one of them. I, I've spoken there as well. It's a they, they meet on Sundays. It's um, it's a little more. It, it's a social gathering group. Uh, there's also a okay. recovering from religion chapter in Kansas City as well. Uh, you can awesome. Yeah, both of those are available. Okay, uh, and um, and worst case, I go up to Kansas City once a year. So keep an eye on my Facebook page, and you know maybe we'll go out and have a drink or something. Oh wait! You can. Oh, you can you can do that now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, hey man, uh, I, I appreciate. It. I'll I'll buy you some Oklahoma Joe's or, or Joe's barbecue now. Are you tired of that Texas junk? Oh no 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 no! See, the thing is, having grown up in Kansas City <laughs> uh, and now living in Texas, um, I have had a chance to fairly judge both of them. And while this will cost me mountains of fan, Texas barbecue is generally superior to Kansas City's barbecue. Sorry. Uh, well, I have no experience in that, so I can't say really. But hey, guys, thanks for taking the time. Um, sure. You know, you guys have been instrumental in, in helping. Um, Definitely, I mean, you know, uh, you hear it all the time. Well, keep it, uh, keep so in my, touch my because thought. we like to find out what happens after. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Take care, Mitch. I appreciate the call. All right. Thanks. No problem. By the way, I still love Kansas City barbecue and Tennessee yeah, barbecue. I just like and Carolina barbecue, and there's all kinds of barbecue. And the biggest difference, the biggest difference is the sauce. And I, I I'm diabetic, so Kansas City sauce is molasses based, and a little sweeter yeah. than I want. Uh, but also, you know, you've got mesquite trees down here to smoke with. That's and right. That's a that's a really cool flavor. And brisket. Yeah, if you're out if you're out in Tennessee and the Carolinas, you tend to not get brisket as much as you get um, uh, uh, pulled pork. Pulled pork, and, yeah. yeah, which is fine. Don't get me wrong. You yeah. you put a plate and put some barbecue in front of me. I'm probably going to enjoy it. Yep. <laughs>